Hey guys, we are going to cover um, James Marsh's statuses of psychological identity development. And uh, so this is uh, what we see during adolescence. And um, this is uh, a video that I wanted to do to make sure that everybody was on the same page in terms of what the identity statuses were. Um, when it's broken down into a sort of a matrix, it's a lot easier to see. So that's why I kind of have this, uh, this sort of matrix up here I'm going to type on. Um, so when it comes to um, Marsha's identity statuses, really this idea is um, as we progress through childhood into adolescence, what we're doing is we're really deciding a lot of very important things in our life. And so what Marsha was trying to, uh, to, to think about here was going, okay, well, there are certain things that are really important that you need to decide upon. Um, and sometimes that comes quickly. Sometimes our decisions of who we are and what we're doing um, is, is easy. Sometimes it's more difficult. Sometimes we go through different processes than others. And so these are not meant to be stages. These are not meant to be sequential. Um, you know, these are just different statuses that we can have at different points in time. And even though we're talking about this during adolescence, we can actually see this change into adulthood. And so, um, whereas somebody might reach an identity uh, status, we might actually see that change as, as one progresses through adulthood. But we're just going to focus right now on adolescence. So when it comes to things like uh, uh, how we think about um, who we are uh, and what our identity is and what sorts of things we, we process. Um, this is typically explained in terms of like your career or your religion, um, but it is much more than that. Um, so think about your identity in terms of who you are, um, in terms of your political opinions, um, your roles in life, uh, whether it's your family role or you know your role as a person in the community, your values, your ideologies, even your sexual orientation, you know, this is what who you identify as. And so um, when we talk about the identity statuses, we talk about this in terms of commitment and crisis. So commitment is essentially um, your degree of your personal investment. How invested are you in this particular identity, um, your political identity? Um, do you, you know, how committed are you in your, in your views of politics? How committed are you in your views of your religion? Things like that. Um, when it comes to crisis, crisis isn't necessarily a bad thing, okay? Um, so we think of crisis as this sort of period of engagement um, in, in which you choose an alternative. It's, it's a period of exploration. So think of crisis as exploring your opportunities, Okay, um, there are times where we don't feel like we need to explore, and there are times that we're in constant exploration. So we break this up into kind of ranges of low and high. So you know, low crisis uh, or low exploration to high exploration, low commitment to high commitment. And each and there's four statuses, and each one fits nicely into the range of crisis versus commitment. So the first one that we're going to talk about is um, diffusion. So diffusion is going to go right here. This is where we see a low level of commitment and a low level of crisis. So uh, diffusion, of course I'm going to mess up here. I'm actually going to do these as text, box text boxes because I think it's going to be, um, it's going to be faster and it's going to look a little bit better here. So just bear with me really quick while I make this work. But so here we have um, diffusion. So diffusion uh, goes here really nicely. We're, I'm going to take away this outline just so that it fits into here nicely. Okay. So diffusion essentially is when you have a low level of crisis or low level ex of, of exploration. Um, you're not interested at all in exploring your options. Um, and you have low level of commitment. You haven't committed on anything. So let's say you are going through high school and somebody asks you what your career is and you go, I don't know. I don't know what I want to be. I don't know what I want to do. And I don't care. And so that person just kind of goes along their life and they don't concern themselves with it. Now, they may have fleeting thoughts here and there of, oh, maybe I should make a decision about what I wanna do with my life, but really, when it comes down to it, 
um, they don't they, they don't really give it much thought. So um, a career is a really good example here because a lot of times we see diffusion in adolescents who don't really want to face that decision and they don't really want to make it and they don't really care. Um, we can also see uh, that we can also see this this happen in um, other instances uh, of, for example, if a person doesn't really uh, have a religion, um, don't really they don't really want to to think about religion in terms of ideologies or things like that. They don't care. They don't they don't have any reason to explore, um, and they have no commitment um, to to anything in particular. So this is just kind of like the person's floating around and they're not making any commitments, but they're not having any pressure from themselves to make a commitment. So diffusion is one where it's not the best for the person because they, they're in a complete situation where they don't need to, they, they don't feel the need to make any decision. So um, the next one. So if you have uh, a high level of exploration, so high level of crisis, and a low level of commitment, then you are in moratorium. Now, moratorium, this is, this is like, for example, if you don't know what you want to do uh, in your career, let's say you're exploring a lot of different options. Um, maybe you want to go into nursing, but you're not really sure. Uh, so you take some nursing classes. Maybe you like psychology, uh, but you're not really sure, so you're going to take a few psychology classes. Let's say you're interested in biology and maybe in English, and you want to do a lot of exploration, but you haven't made a commitment to what you want to major in, for example, and what you want your career to be in. So this would be an example of you have a really high level of exploration. You are, you're in a state of crisis, but crisis is not, it's not a negative thing, okay? This is just a, a, a period of exploration. You're looking at your different options and you're seeing what's going on. And so in this case, you are in a state of moratorium where you haven't committed to anything yet um, and you're exploring things as you go. And this is a really, really great place to be in, in terms of adolescence, because you are looking at what's available to you and you're deciding, you know, you're going to make your decision when you're ready. And so, you know, this is a really low level of commitment, but a really good, um, very good high level of exploration. So this is a really good place for an adolescent to be in. Um, even though moratorium sounds absolutely awful, um, it, it is actually a really good place for a, uh, for a person to be in as a, an adolescent. Now, the next one we're going to talk about is a low level of exploration and a really high level of commitment. Now, this is seen all the time. Okay, so foreclosure means you're, you've foreclosed on all the other options. Okay, so this would be somebody who comes in and they go, um, you know, I, uh, my, everyone in my family is a lawyer. Every single person's a lawyer. I have, you know, I have a, a, an uncle who's a lawyer. My mom is a lawyer. My grandparents were lawyers. And so I'm going to be a lawyer. Okay. So they don't, they, they do not, do not explore other options. So it's a really low level of crisis, but they really do have a high level of commitment. They're, they're like, I don't even need to think about this. If you ask this person what they want to be when they grow up, the first thing they're going to say is a lawyer. We see this in religion. We see people go, I am a Baptist, a Christian. And my parents were Christian and they were Baptist. We go to Baptist church. We've been going to this church for, for generations. And I don't need to explore any other religious options because I've decided this is what I'm, this is who I am. And that's based off of a lot of times, a lot of times is based off of family or based off of what's expected of you. And so um, we also see this in politics. I see this a whole lot in politics where a person comes in and says, I'm a conservative, my, my dad's a conservative, my family believes this thing, and you know this is who I am, and this is what I am, because my parents believe it. Um, and we see this a lot in, 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 in um, adolescence as they, as they sort of go through uh, uh, the um, early stages of college, where they're like, I'm in foreclosure, this is what I wanna do. We see this a lot of time in, um, careers, especially if people have family owned businesses, it's expected of them to, uh, you know, to, to, to be in that business. And so this can be problematic though, because at some point the person might realize this isn't for me. And so they may go through their complete adolescence, go through college and say, I hate my job or I hate my life or I hate what I'm doing, or I hate who I'm around and I hate, you know, all these things and it's not who I am. Um, and so foreclosure can be, can be in some cases, it can be good. And in some cases it can be bad. I'll give you guys an example 
all of my life, I wanted to be a veterinarian. You know, from the day that I can remember from being very, very young, the first thing that somebody would ask me is, what do you want to do when you grow up? And I'd always say veterinarian. And I never faltered on that. I just loved animals and it's what I wanted to do. Well, as I went through high school, um, I was like, wait a second, you know, I don't really like some of these, you know, sort of not necessarily pre-vet classes, but classes that I would sort of have to take as a prereq. And I wasn't, I wasn't really liking this. And I, the first time in my life had to reconsider, wait a second, maybe I don't want to be a veterinarian. And so, um, I was at a state of foreclosure for a very, very long time because that was just what I wanted to do. And I was completely dead set on it and I wasn't going to change my mind. So for a very long time, I was in this particular status, but you can move through statuses, right? So you can, you know, you can start out in diffusion and then, you know, go through a period of exploration and maybe you go into moratorium. Um, but doesn't necessarily mean that it's sequential. It, you know, you don't go always through these in the same order. Sometimes you're in foreclosure and then suddenly you're like, wait a second, um, maybe I need to explore some other options. And then you go into moratorium. Okay. So just because you're in a particular status doesn't mean you're stuck in that status for the rest of your life. The, um, absolute best uh, status to be in okay is achievement and so this is this last one right here maybe I need to spell check here is achievement okay so achievement is essentially where you've had a high level of exploration right you've tried a bunch of different options and then now you have a high level of commitment now you've made the decision and, and you went all right this is what I want to do maybe you took you know, maybe you originally, you were in foreclosure and you said to yourself, I'm going to go in the military because everybody in my family has gone in the military and that's what's expected of me. But then maybe you went to college and started taking nursing classes and then you came out of foreclosure and said, maybe I won't go in the military. Maybe I'll be a nurse. And then you start to, you know, I'm not sure though. I don't know what I want to do. So maybe you take some nursing classes, you take some psych classes, you take some education classes. And then suddenly you're like, oh my God, this is what I want to do. I want to be a nurse and I don't want to go in the military. I want to do this. And so now you've reached this level of achievement where you have a high level of exploration. You've tried a bunch of different options and you've figured out which one best suits you. And then now you have a high level of commitment because now you're like, I'm happy with where I want to be. And now I am exactly where I want to be in life. And so, and you can cycle through these, right? You can cycle through them. And, and, you know, we're not going to talk about, um, as we go into adulthood, but we can actually see people sometimes will end up cycling through these, um, in terms of moratorium and achievement, uh, where people, uh, will, um, you know, maybe be happy with their career and then decide, okay, well, I want to do, I want to try something else and then explore other options and then maintain that achievement through another career. So if, you know, you're, you're sort of a, a late, um, career changer that, that also can happen. Um, but during adolescence, it's important to know the difference between these four different statuses and to know that they're not stages and to know that they're also not sequential. So you can be in a state of moratorium without first having been in diffusion. Um, you can be in, you know, moratorium without first having been in foreclosure. Uh, you can just be in moratorium and in a state of exploration. So, um, you know, that's something that you really have to, to, to really get a good grasp on and to make sure that you understand. So if you have any questions about this, of course, you can use the question forum. You can send me an email, but hopefully um, you got a lot out of this sort of breakdown um, of different kinds of, of um, statuses. So uh, good luck on your quizzes and tests for this week and uh, email me if you have any questions.